And one of the big things about breath work, working on the emotional level, is you don't actually have to know what the issue is that you're working with. You can just be breathing, have that experience, and it can clear, and it can be gone. And it doesn't necessarily have to be spoke about, which can be a very useful and helpful part. But you can just have the experience, breathe into it, let it go, and it can do a lot of healing from that perspective. Hello, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have Craig Seaton. Now, who is Craig Seaton? Craig is a holistic coach who teaches breathwork, meditation, and self understanding to help people quiet their mind, understand their thoughts, release blocked up emotion and trauma, and bring balance to their internal energy system. Originally starting as a personal trainer 12 years ago, he found meditation which completely transformed his life and he began to study the mind, psychology, holistic health, consciousness, spirituality, balance and energy. Knowing that we operate on intradependent energy systems of mental, physical, emotional and spiritual levels, Craig teaches how to develop these areas through natural means and find balance within ourselves to achieve understanding, balance and total health. Let's bring him on. Hi Craig, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I'm enjoying like my tropical palm tree here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was just thinking about uh, about where we met and um, we haven't actually met uh, each other like on a physical level, but we met each other on online, <laughs> which is, yeah. yeah, through our good friends, Mickey and Emma, you were doing uh, breath work for them. You were one of the speakers and, you know, you were incredible. I mean, like, I don't know, like you were going for like an hour or so. I was like, how is this guy going for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, to start off with, um, Craig, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. So my name is Craig Seaton. I'm a breathwork instructor, breathwork coach. I teach meditation and self-development as well. Um, started off as personal training, then along on that mission. Yeah, something changed dramatically for me when I got into meditation and that pretty much sidetracked the rest of my career to, to doing what I'm doing now. Oh, which is amazing. <laughs> which is amazing. Good, amazing work, really. Um, so, you know, before we talk about uh, breath work, mm. can you tell us a bit about your childhood? Like, uh, what was your childhood like? How was your upbringing? Did you face any adversities? To be fair, it wasn't too uh, too hardcore or anything. It was growing up in Stockport. Um, nothing spiritual, really, about my background. You know, there's no belief or look towards God or anything like that. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty standard upbringing, to be honest. There's nothing, no inclination of the work that I'm doing now or the way that I live my life, that it was anything to do with, you know, back as our childhoods uh, go. You know, the, the, the way that we have our childhood definitely puts us onto different paths, but I wouldn't have predicted mine. Yeah, amazing. I know you teach breath work, right? Um, what is breath work? Breath work is just an incredible tool to use for your holistic health, your mental well-being, your emotional understanding and spiritual connection as well. Breath work is basically following your breath in a consistent loop. And we do this for, I say, a minimum of at least 20 minutes. You can use it for every period of time, but these sessions, they can go over two hours, three, four hours or more. Um, and what you're doing while you're in that state is just connecting to your breath again and again. So you're letting go of the mind. When you let go of your mind, all the conscious barriers that we have up that tells about our identification or who we are and what our traumas, our wounds, our conditionings are. So when we meditate deeply or using breath work in this case, we switch those doors off and it allows the unconscious to come through. So the unconscious will come through in anything that we've been ignoring. So we might not be aware of certain emotions or thoughts or feelings there. They get locked away. So these, these emotions, this energy can have a chance to be fully expressed through that breath work. Um, so through that method alone, breathwork is a massively incredible healing tool, you know, the way it can help you restructure your thoughts, and live an experience that you're clinging to, much like um, psychedelics for anyone who's done any plant medicine work, breathwork can have a similar effect. 
and all around it's just going to improve your health like it's just so such a simple tool to use it can get your mind out of so many jams it can make you feel great it can charge you up everything everything yeah amazing yeah i know i <laughs> when i started breath work um you know i i kind of just realized that my breath is like really shallow um mm. and especially you know coming from a background that when i used to suffer from anxiety your breath is quite shallow and it's like really quick and you know it's like um what i'm learning now is you have to take slow deep breath into your belly and then sort of expand it like i kind of struggle with the belly breath for like you know it it always comes around to my chest and when when i try the belly one it just doesn't my belly doesn't expand my chest does <laughs> so is there a tip that you can give to anyone who's in a similar situation um how yeah. to sort of go down your belly it's actually not too uncommon naturally the breathing cycle is when you inhale your belly will rise forward but some people have paradoxical breathing works the other way around mm. so they will inhale but the belly will will move inwards instead yeah. All it takes is a bit of retraining, you know, to focus and spend some time reversing that practice. So you could just sit down for five minutes or so and just follow your breaths in, ensuring when you breathe in, the belly rises out and then you follow as it falls down. Just spending time concentrated. One, you're going to bring up your awareness because it becomes quite that, that one point of focus. But two, you're helping your body restore a natural rhythm because the belly is meant to go out on your inhalations. So if it's a, if it's already a bit of a skew, there's a good reason to go into and help fix that. It'll only help your body state because based on where we're breathing, as you mentioned, breathing in the chest, we stimulate a lot of fight or flight in that mode. So if you look at your emotions, when you're stressed out or you're angry or upset, likely it'll be chest breathing. But when you relax and you breathe into your belly, it changes the chemicals in the system. So you're even going to start to think differently. So anytime you notice yourself in chest breathing, take a breather, literally, you know, count to 10 or five deep breaths and get it into the belly. And yeah, it'll, it'll only bring benefit. Do you hold the breath as well? Like, you know, when you're breathing in, you hold it or is that a totally different sort of thing? You can do. You definitely can do. It depends on what works for somebody. So by breathing in, in a constant flow, say you're counting to three in your head, you're one, two, three. You could then pause for three seconds and then breathe out for three seconds and just repeat that pattern. Mm, yeah, because I notice quite a lot of work, a lot of people, they pause their breath and, and especially in, in uh, when I go for yoga meditations or breath work, there's a lot of pausing and what is what is the point of like sort of pausing your breath like? Well, anything that you're working on, it's got an inward motion and outward motion. When we're pausing, we're just storing, so we're, we're halting or we're, we're protecting. Mm. Um, so you don't... For, for what we're using those modes for, they're not really, they are effective and they do have a use in breath work, but you, we don't really need to focus on them so much. Uh, there's some I like to do through yoga, excuse me, <coughs> which you mentioned. So the yoga working with the, the root locks, where you've got your free locks, your belly, your jaw and your neck lock. Sorry, choking over here. <laughs> so right. working with those locks, when you're doing it through yoga, they help store pressure and lock the energy or the prana within the body. So you won't really find them used with breath work, though, though they can be do. We use them in Kundalini yoga a lot as well. And so you're just breathing, you're following a certain breath, generating a certain level of energy, and then you're containing that energy within the body, which is when you squeeze the glutes and your perineum. Mm. And you lock the breath in the chest and you lock it within the jaw as well. Mm. Yeah, so I know like uh, whenever I'm doing uh, like sort of kundalini breath work as well, you know, when you sort of pause and you kind of, t you squeeze your, your um, like your muscles in, is it? Like your stomach muscles yeah. and things like that in. And then you, when you let go of it, you instantly, you feel so much better. It's like a release, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally get it. Um, so what are the benefits of breath work like physically and spiritually? So physically, you're cleansing your blood. So when you're in that constant breathing in and out cycle, the blood's being pushed and moved around the body. So like when you do cardiovascular exercise, more blood gets pumped around, heart's working harder. Uh, it's the same for what we're doing with breath work is you're just going to cleanse all the oxygen into your body. That blood goes up to the blood-brain barrier, the top of the head, and enters the brain. So you're just absolutely cleansing everything on such a strong degree. You're also improving your, your lungs uh, capacity too because... As you mentioned earlier, a lot of chest breathing just becomes quite natural. But when you're bringing it down into the belly, you start to stretch your lungs out more. So you're working them to their level of um, capabilities. 
Uh, your sleep increases. You can have a really great level of sleep from doing some breath work. It's even a little bit before bread uh, can come in really useful. Uh, so yeah, you, you're basically clean, cleansing everything, all the organs, your brain, the blood, you'll sleep better. Um, and for spiritual improvements, I mean, this is it's a it's tricky to say for everybody because everyone's interpretation on their spiritual level is is likely different. Um, but you can definitely have out of body states, so like out of body experiences with breath work. You can cleanse a lot of stale, stagnant energy. So if you've had anything that's been sitting in the body, that's been you know just keeping you down a little bit. Having a breath work session can really just help push and cleanse whatever's been holding you back out. And one of the big things about breath work working on the emotional level is you don't actually have to know what the issue is that you're working with. You can just be breathing, have that experience and it can clear, it can be gone. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be spoke about, which can be a very useful and helpful part, but you can just have the experience, breathe into it, let it go. And it can do a lot of healing from that perspective. Oh, that's amazing. I can totally understand having like an out of body experience during breath work because if you're doing it for one hour and you're constantly, shh, shh, yeah, <laughs> you, will, you will have an out of body experience. <laughs> how, can you, how can you get to that state? I mean, I know quite a lot of people have mentioned it. I haven't, I've had an out of body experience myself, but it was nothing to do with breath, breath work or meditation or anything. I was an atheist and bam, it came out of nowhere and I'm on a spiritual path. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Um, so how can people like have, like ha uh, have an out of body sort of experience through breath work? Through an actual breath work session. I am, I've never known anybody to, structure the section around having the out of body experience <clears throat> i know that you very much can do before bed so like with lucid dreaming or astral projection there is certain techniques that you could do which you know it requires its whole level of study for itself <clears throat> excuse me but one thing you can do is if you go to bed and you wake up say five five to six hours <coughs> oh, my throat's having a nightmare today <laughs> if you went to bed, say five to six hours and you set an alarm, what can happen is when that alarm goes off and, and wakes you up, you're more likely in the, the REM stage of sleep, which is where your dreams are. And, and then to have a, a lucid experience or a, an astral um, projection or out of body experience is it's much an easier time to get into that state around about those times. Mm. So you can then go back to bed and just follow your breathing in. And as you stay aware on the breath, you let it kind of dissolve into the dream as such by using the breath as your point of focus. And then through accessing that state, you can stay aware in your dreams or you can have a, an astral experience. Oh, that's there are so certain methods of breath what you can do to, to help charge that as well. Mm, that is really good. That's really incredible. So I, I was really curious to find out what is the background or and origins of breath work? So the background of breath work, well, it's been going for thousands of years. Really? Um, wow. We don't want yeah. to just come across it now. Why didn't they introduce it in schools? <laughs> <laughs> you say about so many things, right? It's, yeah. it's crazy. The, the curriculum or the way that we teach things now. But we, we're catching up. Uh, I like to think we're on an optimistic level. We're going to get that way and give out things from schools that are really, really necessary and incredible. Mm. So yeah, breath work's been just been a really old tool. And there's a man called Professor Stanislav Grof, and he founded Holotropic Breathwork. He has been teaching this for about 50 to 60 years, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And he did, um, <clears throat> he was doing a lot of work with people on LSD. So when he was, when LSD was being made illegal and he was using this for psychological breakthroughs, he wanted to find something that could still be used just the same. <coughs> excuse me, which is when he came across uh, the old tribes and other people out towards the east and just studying and seeing what they do for these methods and like shamanistic rituals or how people access these spiritual qualities. And he found breath work through that way and then studied it and put it into, um, I suppose, like a map that you can, you can then use for your own psychological processes. And mm. yeah, he's done so much work towards this stuff and it's absolutely incredible, amazing work. Yeah. And once you've tried it, you know, like the states that it can take you to and what you can develop within yourself from it. And it's just you and the breath, you know, amazing. Yeah, it is like, 
I just find it hard to believe that, you know, these things like meditation and yogas and it's been formed thousands of thousands of years and we're just like kind of just forgotten about it in the middle. <laughs> it's probably why we're so stressed out because we're not in tune with these things, you know, um, especially when in our school, like like meditation is coming into the, some of the schools, not all of them. It's coming in now. But um, if if we taught our kids meditation yoga or breath work imagine how powerful they would be how empowered they would be not only just in the materialistic world but in the sense with connected with themselves as well and that's like less in a um, term or like in less in a complex yeah definitely it's it would just be incredible thing to have these skills and these knowledge and this understanding from a young age you know where the world will get from that perspective yeah and but i think we're that, heading that part way of our role, right we got yeah. to move that on and yeah and i think it's it's coming that way i mean we're feminine energy right like we, there is there's a lot of things coming in in the next couple of years we'll see a lot of these um like a lot of people are waking up basically a lot of people going through their spiritual awakenings and which is just beautiful to see is a great time to be alive you know um a brilliant time to be alive very true it is it's a nice way to see it you know with a lot going on in the world as well with what's occurring it's still nice to be able to see the beauty and the good things that come in life and what it's going to turn into on the on the other side of all this see that's what happens when you're connected with yourself (laughs) 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 okay um so um what led you uh on a path uh to teaching breath work Um, to teaching breath work, I suppose once I discovered meditation and always working um, in the gyms, in the fitness reign of things, I then wanted to get into teaching those things that then helped me grow and develop further. So that was meditation at the start. <coughs> Excuse me. So from getting into teaching meditation, you know, my experiences, studying about it as much as I could, going to learn about it, do retreats, etc. Then got into um, Eastern teachings too, some things like Buddhism, Hinduism, yeah, a lot of Eastern thought, a lot of Eastern philosophy. Absolutely love that stuff. <clears throat> and then, yeah, it was it was really just wanting to share out as much as I could, based on the self development that I'd done, and based on the uh, practices from meditation experiences. Because once you've brought something holistic and natural into your life, and it has had a massive impact and a change, you've always got that tool. You know, it's, you can go and learn meditation and do retreats and techniques and whatnot. But once you've discovered your way in and your method of connection, you don't need anything ever again, you know, to figure these sort of level of things out. Like you have the answers. It's within your experience. Once you've opened that door a few times and you know the route, it's great. Everything mm. you need. You know, you mentioned that you went through like a bit of a sort of transformation at the beginning of the podcast. Um, I, w- I wanna, I wanna know more about. Is it linked in with when you started off this, uh, this path? Yeah, definitely, very much so. It was um, when I went to my first meditation class. I just had an incredible experience. I was at the Buddhist Center in the Northern Quarter in Manchester, and from that point on, I just had to figure out what was that experience. Where was my consciousness? You know, what are the level of thoughts? What's what are these different layers of things going on? What is the the experience that I'm having? And yeah, that changed a lot of things for me from from that point onwards, really. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, what kind of person would want to do it? Would want to do breath work? Yes. Well, uh, anybody can, and I really mean it. Anybody can do breath work. So if you're coming at it from a perspective of you want to do some deeper healing, want to work on some traumas or some some pains, um, or there's some emotion that you can't quite access and you want to let go, <coughs> breath work is perfect for that. It just helps you go inside, switch off all the distractions that we have, people's opinions, what our own thoughts are saying as we back and forth within ourselves. You know, what's a real emotion or what are we creating in the sense of what are we add into it or decorating? So on a deep level of your self-understanding, breathwork can definitely take you somewhere. Um, you know, we structure it out with a playlist of music, so it's guided. So if somebody were to do some specific work to access a certain feeling or emotion, we can help tailor to that beat. But alternatively, it's a case of you go in and you can't really always pinpoint what it is you're going to experience. So you'll do it 
and and off you go and see where you come out with that. There's always something to learn from every experience. So depending on where that person's at, it can be quite tailored towards yourself or you can go open the hands, see what comes, let it, let it bring things your way. Alternatively, you can just come and relax if somebody wants to physically chill out the body. Breath works perfect for it. It doesn't have to be on such a deep, profound level or looking for spiritual answers or uh, personal understanding. Your body just might be so tense and you've not been able to switch the mind off, not been able to sleep. Come and do some breath work and it can do that for you. It can really help all your systems just reset and the thoughts quiet down. Yeah, it seems to be really, really, um, I mean, when you start off, breath work it's it's it is really difficult because you're not really used to it you're not consciously breathing you're breathing from just a normal automatic sense right um so you know any advice that you would give to the listeners who are uh kind of diving into it but like they're struggling with it yeah i'd say give it time be patient with yourself it'll take the first maybe three sessions to kind of feel breath work out and get used to it obviously you can always do practicing on your own in, in short spouts, so you could just work with taking 10 deep inhalations and 10 relaxed exhalations, just enhancing your lung capacity. Uh, meditation helps as well to be able to get into that space. That headspace is really useful. Being able to focus, to have that one point of focus, which throughout the breathwork session, yes, you've got the music on, um, but you just stay with your breath. You ride through the emotions and the experience. So yeah, just be patient with it and, and self-experiment build up your own tolerances, your own breath work practice. Mm. Um, there's one thing that I kind of really struggle with is um, breath of fire. God, I really struggle <laughs> with that. You know, it's <coughs> just so hard to just uh, constantly like, you know, because it's quite intense. You know, sometimes, you you know, you close your thumb and you're like, <laughs> like, you know, you're doing that. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> after like five seconds, I'm all done. <laughs> Yeah, and I've seen like some my friends who they go on for ages and ages, ages, like 10, 15 minutes, and I'm like, "How are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the breath of fire is great. It's a really yeah. good one. Yeah, what is what is what is it like? What is the point of breath of fire? So you've got your different breath um, <laughs> techniques, which do different. They stimulate different responses. Breath of fire is one where you're pumping through your navel. So your belly button's doing the pulling back for you. You just focus on your exhale and the belly will pump it back. And so your inhale will happen naturally. So what that does is it's warming up your abdominal region. So it's cleansing out your organs as well. So it helps purify any toxins because it generates heat, pushes any toxins out. You're also opening up your pranic channels by generating that warmth and heat. You open up your pranic channels as well. Uh, it can work very good for your sinuses too. So it's, it's a full really great for cleansing really good to do if you're cold or you've got a bit of an illness um but yeah it's, it's great energy work it, it cleanses a lot it cleanses a lot of does it cleanse a lot of trauma as well like and there is trauma trauma breath work as well apparently some uh, i don't know yeah different variations i mean the breath work it will the deepest that that state will take you to from my understanding is it'll take you into a state where you can feel and heal the trauma hmm. so it won't necessarily remove your trauma but it puts you in a space where you can feel with it and work with it and that's it with trauma work right it has to be you got to feel to heal it's got to be gone yeah. through it's can't really be bypassed as such so it'll open up their situations where you can you can enter that uh, breath of fire though not not so much use for that more for its heat your technical aspects or the state it can take your mind to mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think you made a really good point about uh, feeling to healing, you know, um, and I didn't really re realize that breath work has a, such a powerful uh, role, like it has a, a powerful role in terms of like feeling into your trauma. You know, I didn't realize that normally what I, I did was when I was going through my own healing, um, I would just sit in a corner and like just just feel all the feelings and emotions and let it out. But nothing it didn't really come into my mind about like the breath work, like, you know, I need to breathe through it. No, I'm just like, Oh my God, let's get this purge, purge it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know there are uh, many different types of breath work, like shamanic rebirthing, holotropic clarity breath work. Can you explain, explain to us what they are? It'll depend on what techniques are taught within those breathwork styles. A lot of them, you're doing just the same thing. 
uh, which is that constant flow of breath. So it's just that the titles of them, people might do things a bit different. They might have a different therapeutic, therapeutical process. How they teach the breath might be a little varied, but ultimately any breath work session is an open mouth, a softly open mouth, full inhalation, and then you let the exhale go and then you pull back in straight away. So there's no pause between the breath. Mm, Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Could you give us like an example um, if you can? Yeah, sure. So yeah. start the first breath work session, for, for instance, if you practice breath, breaths will be your spine sitting up straight, but normally in the main session, you will lie down. So practice you sit upright. You take a deep breath in through the mouth, down to your belly. So away from the chest, you want to bring it into the belly. When the belly's full, you just let go. And then when it's left, straight back in. And that's the process. That's the cycle from there. All right. So it's through the mouth and not some, some of it from the nose as well. Then if you're doing a warm up breath, you might be told from different, different areas, but generally with breath work, you'll make the most by breathing through the mouth. There are different techniques. So when you use the nose, there's a book by James Nestor called breathe, which is me talking about these topics. Quite interesting too. when to breathe through the nose, when to breathe through the mouth, generally doing anything exercise based or daily activities. You want to breathe through the nose. When you're doing something like you're doing breath work or say you're going to do deep sea diving and you need to practice holding your breath, you would use the mouth because you can get a bigger volume uh, quality of air in there. Um, so that's what we teach with breath work as well. It just helps get to the right state of what we're looking for by using the mouth. The nose is always there, but the nose will slow the process down or it will put the brakes on a little bit. So you can control the session more by breathing in and out through your nose. But if you want to get the most out of it, it's through the mouth. Dude. And it's not about going fast either. It can happen just by going slow and gradual. You just want to continually feed that cycle of breath so there's no pauses. Hmm. I came across, um, is it Wim Hof breathing? Is <coughs> yes. it? Win yeah, yeah, Wim Hof. Yeah, it's, uh, I came across it when I was attending Tony Robbins event and um, before that as well. And it was just incredible, like, you know, a session that um, that we, we did. And like, you want, and that got me into sort of like, uh, getting to know more about him you know so what is he about and uh, one of the videos that I watched was where he was doing this breathing and then he went in cold water what is this cold water therapy <laughs> <laughs> go into and he was like in I don't know where it was probably in Antarctica but he was really freezing um he was <laughs> underwater and so he was there for so long and he was holding his breath for so long and I when I did it um I was able to hold my breath for so like for like literally minutes um, when I was when I was doing uh, that breath work. It's quite powerful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very powerful. Yeah, I, I'm, I did a Wim Hof event in London and it was incredible. So there's like 500 people there all breathing together, and then you go down to the ice pools or where they had the ice bath, and wow. you have to go in it's three minutes. We did there, um, yeah, in the cold. Yeah. So how did you how did you feel like um, during it and after? Kind of, I remember doing it and it was just very focused on the breath, just staying committed to the breath in and out. So it's where the practice actually comes into play is you have to, you use your breath to focus. So you're not concentrating on the cold and the contraction the body's going through. You stay with your breath and it's actually, you know, not to make it sound like it's um, super, super difficult, but it's, it's not easy. But when you're going in and you're following the breath, it did become very easy. All my focus was given to that and it was fine. Could have yeah. stayed in more. Yeah, you feel so You've much lighter. Switch. You got to get to that switch. Yeah, and if you if you're struggling to focus on it, just do that breathing, and you'll feel so lighter. And it's like uh, everything just just energy flows mm -hmm. through you. You know, like there's we have filters, and you know, um, <laughs> you know, we got to take these filters out in order for it to flow. Um, yeah. So, how you know uh, for the audiences, how can how can it deepen our lives? How can breath work deepen our lives? Well, it can give you an increased value of health, um, which can increase any life, just recognizing the level of health that you've got. So even if you're struggling to sleep or there's a lot of stress or you're thinking a lot, it can do so much just on those levels. Um, the oxygen intake as well, really good for the body to have, cleanse the blood out, look after the body. For a deeper connection, for me, it's just proved certain things um, that I would experience with, say, plant medicines, uh, or deep meditative meditative experiences. Breathwork has shown me that those states are very accessible to us without anything. 
just with our state of mind, our breath and how the body is, it can absolutely prove just the, the magic of the world that's going on. You know, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned you, you taken plant medicine, right? So what was your experience like with the medicine? Anything, <laughs> anything profound? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did it a good few times. It's actually one of the main reasons I went veg vegetarian was after mm -hmm. doing uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I had lots of, lots of different experiences with them. Ayahuasca, bufo, the, the mushrooms, cambos, etc. cetera. Um, they're all, it's hard to pinpoint anything now because it is, I don't, don't tend to do them that much, but they're all been so useful and so powerful along the years that all I can say towards things like that is when the time's right, you know, go for it. Don't try and hold on to that kind of stuff, but use it for when it's it's time to be used. And yeah, they did um, amazing things for me. It helped my mind in so many ways to see bigger perspectives, help me connect and touch to something that is greater than my, my individual self. So would you say like ayahuasca is probably the strongest one then? No, Bufo, Bufo, I would say. Oh, really? I've, yeah. I've, I've never heard of that one. I've heard about ayahuasca, but not. Uh, what is what? What does what is the purpose of? Uh, Bufo is it um, it's like the strongest DMT that they've they've found so far. It's uh, excreted through toads, so the glands with toads. So they they get it from just like, uh, I don't know what's the word. It comes out of the toads' glands, and then they they capture this like liquid, and it crystallizes and. That's what they take, and yeah, it's pretty, it's crazy. It's very intense. Wow, that's that's incredible. Mm. Learn something new every day. <laughs> I'm <loving> it. <laughs> ayahuasca is only like fifteen to twenty minutes, while ayahuasca can be can be hours, right? Mm, yeah, amazing. So you know, most people are quite busy with everyday life, and it can get quite um, overwhelming and stressful. What type of breathwork could they do that is quick and easy for them to do when they're feeling uh, overwhelmed? I'd say always take a deep breath when you can check in. You know, when you're stressed out and you're tired and somebody says, just take a deep breath or you breathe in and then you sigh and you relax. Anytime doing that is good. A sigh is a sign that we're relieving stress. We're letting go of some stress. So anytime from a deep breath is fantastic. I would say try and bring in 20 to 30 consecutive breaths. So one breath after the other without a pause. Um, 20 to 30 times do maybe one set of that a day, build up to three sets. Alternatively, there's also a box breathing where you're breathing through the nose. And this is great if you're stressed or you have trouble sleeping, you can't nod off, your mind's overworking. Count to four as you breathe in and then hold that breath for four seconds. Count it to four as it leaves and stay empty of breath for four seconds. And you can just work that box. So you go around the box and it maybe it's three seconds to start, three seconds in, Three seconds pause, three seconds out, three seconds pause. It's just a great way to calm the system down. Oh, that's amazing. So um, if you're struggling with um, anything right now, maybe stress or anxiety, I think anxiety is is leading the way right now, especially in these times, you know, when now we're in lockdown and a lot of people are suffering. So breath work could really, really help you in that sense, guys. So give it a go. So Craig, could you give us like a five minute guided uh, breath work for anyone who's going through stress right now? Yeah, sure. Um, we'll do two. A very simple one is to do alternate nostril breathing. So you can take your left hand, place it in your lap, so the palm's facing upwards. The right hand can come to the face, and using your right thumb, block the right nostril. And you can take your next two fingers down or keep them left up if it's easier in your palm. And we're going to breathe out the left nostril, so full breath out. Then you inhale fully. When that breath is full within the body, pinch the nostrils together very lightly, just so it stops the flow leaving the nose. Open the right side, exhale through the right nostril. When that breath is left, we inhale. You hold the nostrils together briefly, then open the left side, exhale. When you're empty, you breathe back in, fill the body. Hold the breath over to the right nostril, exhale. When it's left, breathe in. Make sure the belly is widening. We're filling the body on that inhalation. Holding the nostrils. 
open the left side, breathe out. And once you've breathed out, relax there, bringing both palms down. So that breath work, uh, alternate nostril breathing, very simple practice. That was just under two minutes there. And that helps regulate your system. So it helps to synchronize your left hemisphere of the brain to the right hemisphere. So you get better cognition, your brain functions a little clearer and you're helping cleanse the body out as well. And it will bring stress levels down. Very good to do to breathe into the belly mm -hmm. to, yeah, to eliminate that stress. Uh, the second technique I'll take you through is box breathing. So we'll just do this for around a minute. <clears throat> All you need for box breathing is to visualize the box. So we're going to breathe in for four seconds. We'll inhale for four. Then we pause for four seconds. Then we breathe out for four. Then we stay empty for four. And you can visualize a line drawing. So we go down for four seconds. We hold the breath for four seconds. We exhale for four seconds. And we stay empty for four seconds. So you can close your eyes for this practice. And I'll just do the timing. So take a deep breath in. Let it go. And now slowly inhale through the nose for three, two, one. Hold that breath. Three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Stay empty. No breath in the body for another two, one. Inhale for three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Stay empty for three, two, one. Inhalation for three, two, one. Hold for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one. Stay empty for three, two, one. Inhalation for three, two, one. Hold the breath for three, two, one. Exhale for three, two, one, and relax, inhale naturally, however your pace suits. And that one there was just a minute of box breathing, which can really help just give the mind something to focus on. And again, regulates the body, everything calms down and the breath, as long as that breath gets long and it feels quite um, natural with the flow of it, simple, very simple to do. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Greg. I, I did the uh, I did the second one. It was amazing. I'm just like totally going to zone out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, so, you know, moving on to uh, lucid dreaming, because you just mentioned about lucid dreaming during the interview as well. You know, and, and plus when we were having a pre-chat, we had a good discussion about it. Um, what is lucid dreaming uh, for our listeners who don't know? So lucid dreaming is the awareness that you're in a dream while you're dreaming. So you recognize you're in the dream. Oh, that is beautiful. So have you had like, um, what is the most profound experience that you've had? Uh, a lot of that is it's very deep work because you're already talking to your unconscious state. You know, you're in the dream world. So everything's on such a deep level. So it's brought a lot of deep uh, personal experiences. I think one, one of my favorites was actually I would practice meditation within the dream state or I'd practice mantra. And I remember doing the chant. It was a Buddhist chant. It was on Mani Padme Hum, And I was just chanting this mantra in the dream state. And it was like a massive choir of Tibetan monks that just started to join in with this deep growling uh, mantra sound. And then this music started to play and then angelic voices were joining. It was incredible. Mm. It was just the energy the, mm. of what was going on as well at the same time. It was yeah phenomenal. Do you like um, in lucid dreaming, can you, are you in control of everything? Can you change, say, for example, you know, when you're dreaming, sometimes you're not in control of it. You know, you, it just plays out during lucid dreaming. Can you like, OK, I'm not I'm going to go straight, you know, automatically you're going to go straight, but I'm going to go. Right. So can you just kind of shift that? Can you be in control of your dream? You can, yeah, and to, to a much stronger degree. So in, in Tibetan Buddhism, they offer out practices. So they, when you recognize you're dreaming and you realize it's all just mind, it's your projection of the mind that's going on. And they, they offer tasks. So you'd start to duplicate objects and make multiple objects. Or you would 
take multiple objects and shrink them into one. There was one I would practice where I smashed the glass in the dream and then I rewound the glass falling down and coming back up and making a shape again. And, you know, so you really try and influence the environment um, and, you know, including yourself, because when you see yourself in the dream, again, that's just the mind's projection of, of how we look because we always see ourselves with our body. So there's different elements to use to practice to help expand your mind and eventually see there's no distinction there's so much between the dream realm and the waking state because they use it in preparation for death so yeah there's a lot of practice into what you can do with your environment and it has purpose it's not just for the sake of being in the dream it's your opportunity to do some real real deep work yeah i heard i also heard that you know when you sleep that is the most um that is when you're really connected to the spiritual world, world basically. Mm -hmm. So you, you're able to leave your body. But someone I also mentioned that you leave your body, you mostly leave your body, but then you don't remember it when you come back in. So I'm just thinking whether you just sleep, uh, you, you sleep every day, but you're, then you're chilling in a different realm, like, you know, with all the, all the crew, like angels and spirit guides, <laughs> and then you come back, you forget. <laughs> <laughs> probably why it's like oh i saw that angel like a little memory of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i've heard similar things before as well that you you forget certain yeah. things when you're off in the astrals doing whatever it is that we're doing yeah and also like i think it's really important um like during and, and another thing that i heard is like when you sort of um astral project you know you least kind of leave your body um y it's really important to have your cord attached Right. Is it true that, you know, it could, you could actually, if that cord gets cut, energetic cord gets cut, um, you could actually just like, like die or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that's true from the yeah. stuff that I've looked at and read all the people I listen to. A lot of them said, you know, there's, there's fears about things like that when it comes mm. to actual projecting, but it's not. Yeah. So you can, you're steady. always, yeah. You always come yeah. back to your body. Yeah. 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 Which is good. I don't know. I don't know anybody who hasn't yet. <laughs> Well, you know when they say people die in their sleep, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I was really curious about. So I'm aware that you uh, held spiritual retreats and you brought in someone for Cambo. Um, what is Cambo and the benefits of it? Cambo is uh, it's like a toxin that you they get from, the, from frogs. From, I think it's little toads, not the frogs. And yeah, you take the paste and you do a ritual towards it. And you put a bit on your skin, on a small bit of skin, and it works its way through your system, cleanses out your lymph nodes. I don't know too much about the whole science of it. I know it cleans, cleanses your, your lymph nodes out. Um, and yeah, you have a big a big purge based off it. You can feel very, uh, you get different results for people. You can feel very flu-like. It can, you know, I've seen somebody quite have a relaxed journey with it once. Mm. Uh, it can make you sick, can make you sweat. Not generally the most pleasant of experiences, but really good for, for cleansing out. Yeah, what is the spiritual meaning behind it? So is it just the energetic cleanse or uh, trauma I think release? So. I'm not too, too um, knowledgeable on what the Cambo relations are, but yeah, I think it's just down to having a big cleanse. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting because like one of my friends, um, she, she she said she had like really like, there was a lot of things that she, <laughs> she purged. <laughs> It's like she goes, "Would you want to do it?" It's like, um, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the to-do list. <laughs> or maybe in like ten years' time, like with ayahuasca yeah. as well. <laughs> you know, these uh, these um, plant medicines are like quite sacred, aren't they? So uh, when is your time? Is your time? Yeah. Um. So um. You know, we just we're heading towards the end of the interview, Craig. And you know, I just wanted to say thank you so much. For for sharing your knowledge with us but before we go i want to go through some rapid fire questions with you um yeah. you can you can give quick answers or you can expand on it as much as you want you know um so are you ready <laughs> Time to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what is your definition of god life consciousness life exploring itself beautiful what do you think happens when you die? I tend to side with the reincarnation theory. You know, the energy can't be disputed into nothing. It goes somewhere else. So I think based off what your energies are, your karmas, how you've lived your life, it will bring itself about to bring you to your next one based off cause and effect. 
Hmm. And do you do you think that we come back if we don't heal something in this life? We come back as like, oh, you missed the spot. <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, I guess so. Yeah, but well, I think it's you know you build up from your choices and your feeling, the energy that you have creates something new. You know how we're always rebuilding ourselves, and whatever we've set that into predominant traits by the end of our life, I think that would have an effect for the next one round. Mm -hmm. Um. How do you define religion and spiritual spirituality? How do I define them separately? Yeah. Religion, I think, can be incredibly beautiful when it's not been soured on or it's not used as uh, a superiority issue. Or, you know, I think everybody is entitled to believe whatever they want to believe. And it shouldn't ever have to cause any any issues you know it's it's a sad thing that religion has been soured in that way because it's such a beautiful connection you know religion to to rejoin for union so they have a lot of love for religion it's people skewing of things that doesn't do so well mm -hmm. and spirituality yeah i think everything you can see everything on a on a spiritual level if you choose to look at life through either the lens of compassion or something that you love or appreciation for things that you have and that you know, spirituality for me is, is, is to see everything that way, which is an ongoing task. It's definitely not complete, but to always remember that everything's connected. Everything has its purpose in, in one way or the other. And there's mm -hmm. always more. There's always yeah. more than we know. There's always more. It, it never ends. Um, so what is the lesson that took you longest to learn? The lesson that took me longest to learn. I'm going to say patience. Oh, yes. Patience. Oh, my God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a lesson that i'm trying to yeah <laughs> master <laughs> yeah patience um i'm fully in present moment when oh, when i'm practicing with my bow stuff my uh, martial arts stuff my nunchucks oh, um do you believe there is an end to healing there is an end for healing yeah yeah i think there, there can be an end to healing i think we have days when something bothers us and days when that same thing doesn't bother us and it can be genuine doesn't mean we've pushed something under the rug so i think i think seeing it as a state of healing is what changes like there'll be always something more to evolve into or to grow or to to reconstruct in one way or the other but when we know we don't have to do that anymore we're done you know doesn't mean healing won't happen on other levels but we're not pursuing that or chasing that it's life's great as it is and it's going to yeah. keep doing this it's perfect as it is including your healing um <laughs> yeah so uh the world needs more of what more truth actually tell a lie more truth would be great but we look at the age that we're in and just information and truths and perspectives seem to tangle things up a lot don't they mm. um I think it'd be more more understanding, really, more understanding of other people, other people's views. Even if two people are arguing and, and they have different opinions, to understand and find a common ground, not who's right or wrong, but who gets it, you know, who how you can connect things, that's that's what we need more of. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so well, one, uh, two more questions, actually. So what is the one message that you would like to share with someone who's going through adversity, who's going through a dark night of the soul, or even their spiritual awakening and they're confused, what would you tell them? Just keep following whatever light that you see. Go with that because it's really hard to figure these things out and logically you can't always figure these out. You know, find people who have been there and somebody you can talk to. To, to... I never felt alone as such. I was absolutely enthralled by it. I thought it was unbelievable and a, a pretty pretty magical experience um so i was fortunate that way but i know the people who, who haven't seen it that way it's been very difficult for them so yeah reach out find the right people that you need to talk to and know that it is for a purpose and you're just going to bring more incredible magic to the world from from going through it yeah totally agree um what what is the work that you're doing now and how can people contact you so I'm doing breath work now every Tuesday and Thursday. We do this through Zoom, uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the evenings. And yeah, that's pretty much where I'm doing most of my sessions at the minute. Hopefully we'll get back to real classes soon and being uh, in live and in person again. Yeah, amazing. Um, how can people contact you? Uh, Instagram, my main Instagram. handle, Craig underscore Seaton 02. 
Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Craig, uh, for uh, sharing your wisdom and knowledge about breathwork with us. I, I found out quite a few things as well, and I'm sure it will help so many of our listeners. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say? No, just try some breath workout. It doesn't have to be with me. It could be with anybody or even just follow a video at home for five, 10 minutes and just see the difference it can make for you. It's incredible. I never would have expected my life would have gone into working with breath work and what it teaches, but it's, yeah, shows we've already got all the answers and all the ability to heal and acknowledge is, is within us. Beautiful. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. It's been great. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.